There's no place to escape to. This is the last time. Oh, yes. On the left. <laughs> That's when the cannibalism started. times when we do these shows, right? We get, you guys know, <laughs> everything's praying, off Marcus? the cuff. <laughs> He's praying. We always I'm do listening. these things I'm off listening the intently. Please, thank you. Thank you. I, it's so nice to have a focus. Uh-huh. Um, oh, is it I never listen to you? It, it, no, no, you're forced to. We are all, you are all, we are all forced to listen to each other. <laughs> yes. Um, but normally when we start one of these, we joke about these things. We, you know, like we're off the cuff here. We don't like yeah. to show up here with too much prepared material. Comedy wise, let's just hop right into it. But normally, <laughs> it's Kissel that has some joke. You know, you show. Oh, up, I have like, a good oh, joke. Yeah, but actually, I've been no, 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 no. About a joke. This was this is Marcus's joke. It's my turn. Whoa! It's when my, we came turn. up with this Holy concept, shit. when we said this concept, yes. when I said the word, and I've never had this. It was weird. Okay. It was like his clothes morphed. You all okay. of a sudden he had a suede wow. tracksuit on. And I was like, where'd that come from? And I saw, I saw he was wearing flip flops. He had two little dogs with him. Whoa. I was just like, whoa, where did he come? Cause Crazy. I said, oh, we should do this topic. It's really a uh, super, super sure. compelling. It's about La Llorona. Yeah. La Llorona. Yeah. I'm Llorona. working on it. No, you're, you got it wrong. Okay. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. And then Marcus said, La Llorona. La Yarona. You got a joke. No, that is a, That's a, a song, song parody. parody at its worst. But guess what? I then realized afterwards I have a better song parody that hopped into my mind. Wow. I was You're pitching wanting, this you show wait. to a very successful man yesterday, and he said he was going to listen to this episode. This is it. Mr. Big's here? <laughs> kind of. All right, Mr. Big, you ready? Here we go. All right. <laughs> First, you take your kids and you put them in the river and you put oh your hair God. down and you make yourself a quiver. Every time I cry, I make the hoven shiver. Hey, hey La Llorona. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the last podcast of the left, everyone. Ben hanging out with Marcus. I don't think that's too fair because and I came Henry's. up with mine off the cuff and Henry's had a week to think of well, Macarena La Llorona. I wrote that down last night. It was very successful. Okay, everyone. Today we're discussing La Llorona. 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 It's La just a, Llorona. 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 <laughs> oh there we God. go. We're keeping all this in. <laughs> this whole episode is about us. This whole year, honestly, we're trying to do more. Yep. Embracing other cultures. Of course. Yes. So how, do we, how do we see how you guys see and how do we get into there? And this is a good spooky way into entering the Latin American culture. Absolutely. I'm super excited to get into this. Well, La Llorona is a legendary creature of Mexican descent, Ooh. both urban legend and mythical boogeyman. She's a cautionary Boogie woman. <laughs> Boogie How woman. dare you? Yes. She's a cautionary tale told to children, teenagers, drunks, and amorous youngsters alike in a variety of ways that all share the singular qualifier of a weeping woman. Well, there are thousands of variations on the La Llorona tale to the point where families can have their own versions of the creature that are passed down through the generations. Cool. Even separate villages in the same province will have different stories of La Llorona. It follows. Different neighborhoods and cities will have different La Llorona. Interesting. La Llorona comes in a diff- bunch of different fashions. Yeah. You got yeah. Arctic fever, ooh, Llorona. Yes. You've got um, ooh, down in the cacti, Llorona. You've mm-hmm. got ooh, Ooh, mountain, delicious. mountain rush, La Llorona. Forget, oh, yeah, and a cool a, breeze, La Llorona. My favorite new Mountain Dew, Cold Sore. <laughs> I it love it. Because each one has been licked by another person <laughs> who may or may not have a cold sore. <laughs> well, in its simplest form. Why are called cold sores? They look pretty hot to me. <laughs> That's a really uh, good pun. That's a good pun. That's a good pun. Something. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I told uh, someone I to t- listen to this episode right off the Mr. top. Mr. Big. Think, remember. <laughs> and that it, when that it be another Rona. Right. I, got, I don't hey, have any more words. Hey, your Rona. I? Well, let's just hop right into it. <laughs> Technically, it's wordplay. Well, in its simplest form. La Llorona is a cautionary river tale that's supposed to keep kids from drowning. It's a lot like the Scottish Kelpie. Hundreds of water demons exist throughout okay. hundreds of cultures. Any culture that exists or develops near rivers or bodies of water has something like this. Mm-hmm. Basically, 
That version of La Llorona tells you to not go down to the water by yourself because there's a scary lady down there who will she'll take you away. <gasps> she'll rip you to shreds no. with terrible claws. Ooh. Or she's just she just fucking eats you right yeah, then and you, there. You disappear. And the, but that is the most simplified version yeah. of La Llorona. Yeah, yeah. But do we really need these tales when alligators exist? <laughs> not why, there. Like, why does ever we don't need to, I don't I am scared of sea creatures well, already. The yeah. only problem with kids river creatures. Kids will like they're fascinated with animals. They think they're like, oh. Oh, what you have to do is you got to take a fucking raw chicken. You got to go over the river and be like, kids, you want to see what's in the river? And you watch the thing going, snap, snap, snap. Yep. Like out yeah. of the thing, eating the chicken out of your hands. And be like, you ready to go back to the river now? Yeah, because exactly. at, at the end of the day, if you're a kid and you're told that there's a crocodile down there or an alligator, not only are you going to go look at it, you start thinking, maybe that alligator could be my friend. Love it. Maybe I could True. use that alligator to go eat the kids who are beating me up at school every day. Hasn't met me yet. Can't figure out how to assemble the AR-15. <laughs> I need to get that croc out of the river yep. and into my classroom. That's the Disney vacation. Disney Disney vacation. Yeah. Disney vacation of school of the alligator. Oh, oh, oh. no, the anthropomorp anthrop anthropomorphization. Wow. This is not good. <laughs> These long words are not good for us. I don't like it. But when the story is more complicated, La Llorona is a tale of a lover scorned and what may become from a betrayal most bitter. This is how that version of the story goes, as recounted in an article about La Llorona published in an issue of the Texas Observer. Ooh. Texas Observer, you have to have big eyeballs. You do. Also a <laughs> great publication. Yeah. In this iteration, a beautiful young woman beguiles a rich man, and this big shot consequently wines and dines the beggarly beauty. And then eventually, they have kids together, and it all happens on the hush-hush. Mm -hmm. And he keeps telling her, hey, don't worry. One of these days, you're going to be Mrs. Big Shot. Hey, man, it always oh. works out like that. <laughs> Ladies, shoot for the moon, because sometimes you end up on the dick of a producer. Well, look at <laughs> Queen Camilla. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, it did be a perfect Seriously. dick riding all the way to royalty. Absolutely. <laughs> well, eventually, though, the wealthy man gets bored stringing along his side piece, and he abandons her, and he mm. abandons the children. He tells her, I'm never going to take you as my wife. Are you fucking stupid? You're some kind of fool or something? I never was. I was never going to do that. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> this man's about to be haunted for the rest of his life. No! <laughs> it's just pillow talk, baby. Come on. Me! Oh, God. I'm special. <laughs> Driven insane by the casual cruelty of her lover. No! <laughs> All right, that is a horrible interpretation of this scorned woman, the, Mr. Zabrowski. The woman takes her children down to the river and drowns them one at a time. Yeah, fucking Neil Young. Yeah. So much like Neil Young. Also, can we please have Keith Morrison just tell us about this story on Dateline? And would you believe? <laughs> She took her children to the river. What a hunk, you leathery wallet. <laughs> but when she sees the dead bodies of her toddlers floating downstream, she realizes what she's done and drowns herself thereafter. <laughs> oh. You never want to sound like a turkey. Your last breath should not sound like a turkey trying to survive the knife of Sarah Palin. <laughs> her soul soon arrives at the pearly gate. She stands in front of St. Peter, and St. Peter asks, Hey, where are your children, young woman? <laughs> Miserable she lies. And no, Sam! <laughs> Wait, I do not know! <laughs> I know, I hear you, I forget. I forget I'm not doing hilaria. Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> Wait, but why didn't the kids go to the pearly gates? The kids didn't go to heaven? She drowned her kids and God sent them to hell? That's what they got. Uh, possibly purgatory. They may not have been baptized. They had the opportunity she, oh, No, no, no. Point. If you are drowned, baptized. That, that's what I <laughs> think. No matter what. Yeah. No, I would imagine the children are probably in purgatory or St. Peter's just fucking with her. The kids might be hiding. They're already in there. Yeah, the kids might be hiding behind St. Peter like... <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's a lie by omission, St. Peter. Yeah, yeah well, the, the two kids are just both sitting on Gilles de Ray's knees <laughs> in heaven. No. Enjoying himself. Gilles de Ray is not in heaven. <laughs> well, she's he, could, he apologized at the very end. He did. I know. She's miserable. She lies. She says, I don't know where they are. So, St. Peter sends her back to earth, cursing her to wander forever as a restless soul until she finds the bones of her children. The bones of my children! The woman's spirit then returns to Earth as La Llorona. 
eternally weeping and wailing while wandering the riverbanks of Mexico and Texas until she finds those bones. But until <gasps> that day comes, little boy. That's you. I am the little boy. La Llorona may just settle for you. No! You can have me. <laughs> hey, I'm actually looking for a mom. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing you'd love more. Isn't that nice? Also, you don't have to buy your ghost mom a house. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they become one eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I want to shit. There has been a lot of proof of La Llorona that has been captured over time. Mm. People have re like, the reason why we ended up doing this episode was mm -hmm. because we were doing our Sirius XM call-in show. And yeah. I forgot what the subject was, but La Llorona came up. It was so cool. And I've never had this in our history of uh, the small history we have of doing the call open show. Lines, the yeah. boards just blew up. Yeah. And a lot of people called it and said they had witnessed La Llorona. Fernando or on producer believes mm -hmm. that he probably had some form of visitation by La Llorona. It's the same thing again and again. You see a woman buy a body of water dressed all in white quite mm -hmm. often than not. She turns and looks at you where was a face is a black hole and it emits a whale. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is actual footage of a well, auditory footage yeah. mm -hmm. of La Llorona, she make it a noise. I'm telling you, those calls were compelling. That's not, that's a whale right there. No, that's a that's coyote. No, no, looking for bones. You see, look, you can see La Llorona is at the top there on the tree. Sounds like Yogi Bear is getting pegged or something. That's the, you know, it, getting La Llorona. It sounds like Chewbacca before the sound mixer like mixed in the last animal. Like, okay, this is all things probably built towards La Llorona. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Further evidence. Great. So there's that. There's also this other picture of a blurry smudge uh -huh. that I have here that's also very good. None other than La Llorona. You can see, watch that. Look at that. That's a phantom. I agree. I don't know what sure. that is. Yeah. That's La Llorona. Yeah, sure. But, but everybody's La Llorona. seen her. Everybody's seen her. And they all say, too, it's like it's the same. It's a sense of foreboding yes. and of longing. Yes. yes. A horrible way to spend eternity. Yeah. Edging, basically. <laughs> oh, honestly, it sounds like. Some Horror. people like it. No, but they like no. the they like the process after the edge. But if yeah. you just edge, ooh, yeah. it would be like all I want to do is climb Mount Rushmore and hang off the nose of George Washington, but you only get to his chin forever. I feel like it's more like I want to go to a restaurant, but it's booked. Hmm. It's like that that would be your purgatory. Okay, well. Yeah. Now La Llorona isn't just a tale meant to keep kids from drowning. And what my wife informs me is a culturally Hispanic thing, La Llorona is also used by parents to punish excessive crying. Oh, sure. Hmm. It's the worst version of you want to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. And they always do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because after all, Llorona translates to cry baby. Oh. And kids are told that if they cry too much, they will eventually invoke the spirit of the ultimate cry baby, La Llorona. Ooh, I thought you were going to say Johnny Depp. Oh, <laughs> great movie! Hot Hot takes. Takes. Wonderful movie. Iggy Pop, highly underrated in that movie. No well, kidding! Yeah. Hatchet Face was my favorite character. Hatchet Face is wonderful, yeah. Iggy Everything Pops, about cry Iggy baby. Pop's having a moment. He is? He is. He is. Well, as the logic goes, if La Llorona killed her own children when she was alive, Imagine what she'll do to you now that she's dead. She's learned her lesson and she'll take care of them. That would be nice. <laughs> she realized, hey, maybe that was all a waste. And now I'm obviously here wailing and searching for my lost children. Maybe I got these new children. Yeah. Maybe it's time to start over no, no, no. in a way that I can grow and change, like yeah. step by step. No. Step by you step. You put La Llorona <laughs> in the, the character of, of, of uh, Tim Duffy's position. Yes. Uh, he, she, La Llorona would understand, actually, I have to grow up. Uh -huh. In order for myself, I might be in body an adult, but I need to be one up here as well. Absolutely. Right. She needs to go to a ghost therapist. And you know what? I'm not for the remakes of films. They're remaking White Men Can't Jump. It's fine. Watch the original Rosie Perez. You don't need another one. It's kind of crazy. They made the white men be able to jump. Isn't that stupid? <laughs> and it was They got jumping boots on now. It's like yeah. in the, the original Super Mario Brothers movie, which yeah. is my Super Mario Brothers movie. And that's where right. I'm staying. That's where it, I it takes place on Mars or on the moon. Where white men can jump a little bit more. But you know what movie could be remade? Ghost Dead. Huh. Oh, I kind of need to be remade. Complicated. Complicated legacy with Ghost Dad. It's because a little complicated. This is Ghost Mom. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, as it is, the way La Llorona is described as looking when she comes to get you, it can indeed be terrifying. Oh, yes. In the version of the story in which La Llorona acts as a siren that lures drunk men to their watery dooms, she starts as a beautiful, weeping woman who seemingly needs consoling. And, and nothing is harder. 
than a woman crying next to a river. I thought I, I was going to go the angle. Nothing's more consoling than a hammered guy who went down to the hey, lake to hey, piss. Hey, I help you out. No, it. I just, uh, hey, it seems you're pretty upset. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you know who shouldn't be? You, because LeBron James shit the bed last year at the Lakers, right? And he was real upset. And he's like, a good time. Sports bar consoling. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when the drunk man offers to help, the woman's face turns into either a bear's skull, yes. a bat, yes. a metallic horse's head, cool. or worst of all, a smooth blank nothingness. That's that, the shit that creeps me out. Yeah. So much scarier always. because then it's like you put whatever image you want on it yeah. and it's always the scariest thing you can imagine. I, no lips, no eyes, no nose. Do you remember in Twilight, to so the Twilight Zone movie uh-huh. when they cut to the girl, that, that one segment where it's the boy mm-hmm. that could wish like all of this shit. I love, that's my favorite bit in that movie, but cutting to the sister when they revealed that she had no mouth. Mm-hmm. That was one of the scariest ones of childhood. That's great. Yeah, one of the uh, most horrifying Sandman stories in the Sandman comic book is, you know, it just has one scene of a bunch of faceless, noseless, blank-faced ladies devouring a man slowly while he cannot move. And then, of course, the opposite can be true if you remember Blank Face from Dick Tracy and all of a sudden you're like, it's Madonna! Yeah, oh, <laughs> boy. Yeah, and you're like, no face, big tits! Whoa. <laughs> now, this story, of course, teaches you another important lesson. Don't go down to the river at night when you're drunk. Got you. Even though it's super nice. It's really nice I to go down to like, the river. Why you're feeling, is this the lesson? You're feeling like, because you can fall in and drown really yeah. easily. Because it's dark. I, there's either a serial killer in Austin right now or people are getting fucking hammered <laughs> and falling into the, <laughs> the, yeah. the river. Falling into the river. Yeah, it's real easy to fall and drown in a river. Look at Jeff Buckley. I, he wanted to. That's he did. He, they, wasn't, he wasn't drunk, but he still, he still drowned in a river. Rivers have a mean, strong undercurrent that it's unpredictable. It's mm-hmm. true. And I might just be a city boy. Um, I feel like rivers are easy to avoid. Uh, it's like well, right yeah. there. Yeah. It, you're never just going to like happen upon a river. But, no, but you you're going to see a river. You can happen upon a river. But the point is that you shouldn't choose to go down to the river when you're drunk because the rocks are slippery. You slip, you fall, you hit your head, you Boom. drown. There's all sorts of bad things that can happen. Again, this is all like, this is all Neil Young's crime. I know. I know it. But this version of La Llorona also warns men against honey traps. Oh, yeah. For example, in years past in the city of Austin, La Llorona came in the form of an urban legend called the Donkey Lady. (laughs) The Donkey Lady. Now, that's a name I can say. (laughs) The Donkey Lady. (laughs) It's actually almost too easy for me. Yes. The Donkey Lady would lure UT frat boys down from 6th Street to the Red River, where all manner of awful things may occur. Wow. They might look through your phone. That would be the worst of all. (laughs) But when it comes to what children are told La Llorona looks like, it's said by some that the centuries of crying have marked La Llorona's face with two scars that lead down from her eyes. And because her body has long since emptied itself of tears, she now weeps blood. It's nothing but blood! (laughs) That's fucking cool, honestly. If you're crying blood... See a doctor. See a doctor. doctor. Very scary to see yourself, though. Furthermore, her hair has never stopped growing since she killed her children. It has become a tangled mess that wraps around her body. And likewise, her nails have grown into claws so that she might more easily rake the muddy waters of streams, ditches, and shores for the bones of her murdered children. Can I ask her... Just go downstream a little bit <laughs> because, you know, you could I, I, people find bodies all the time. Mm. I did How? not come back from the dead <laughs> searching for my children. You just got to go down. Talk to by some man. I'm just a drunk I guy. I know at the how way. to find my children. You want to find your children? I weep professionally. I and know. I I'm don't just saying. need you mansplaining you how looked? I'm supposed to mourn spectrally. <laughs> Have you looked near the dam? <laughs> I did think of, about that, but I ain't letting you tell me you're right. I'm not. I'm just. Uh, I want to help you get to heaven. You want? Why don't you just sit and listen to me cry and let me get it out instead of always I'm offering sorry. advice to fix it? I'm gonna drown myself now. <laughs> I'll say, I'm not a river rat. 
by any stretch of the imagination. That's a, a term. I know what Texas, it is. Yeah, it's but no Texas one's a, you always say things that no one's accused you of being. Yeah, but yeah. I I'm never said gonna, you were a river rat. No. But, no, I mean, but I say that as to say I'm not an expert on Texas rivers. However, I do know. Good. Thank Texas, you for clarifying. Yeah, because, you know, river rats, I mean, that's a whole lifestyle. That's a whole lifestyle. That's a whole life life, yeah. the whole thing, yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying it's bad. Of course not. I have plenty of good. Who are, of my you best friends. Who, are you who are you thinking? Who are you pretending that you're going to upset? <laughs> yeah, who are you stepping around? <laughs> We've like, covered the, so much <laughs> rape and murder, and at no point have you been like, no, I don't want to step on any toes. But you've made up someone who's going to be offended by something that you're about to say about river rat lifestyle. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is that the rivers of Texas, specifically like the Brazos River, which I grew up yes. off the Brazos River, the Brazos River has many forks. It has many branches. It has uh, many tributaries. The spoons, so, Kev, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so therefore, La Llorona would have a difficult time figuring out which of these breaks, which of these brooks, sure, which you. of these forks her children's bones lay down. Do you think that maybe if she was Mr. Yorona, she could figure it out? Is that what you're saying? Because <laughs> well, men naturally have more iron in their nose? You know what is interesting? This is why if you do drown your kids, like that one woman who did in the back of the car. Andrew Yates. You know where they are. So you want to yeah. tie them all together as yeah. one. And then because, yeah, what does she have? Four kids or something? I mean, it depends. I mean, the, it could be one. It could be two. Most of the time, it's at least two. So Most at least of the time. Two. So that's, that is a different path. That's, that's difficult yeah. to do. Fly from your grave. Well, this creature is said to act without mercy. Nor hesitation. Mm. There is no negotiating with La Llorona. No Never argument. Yeah. And this especially goes in other versions of the story in which she appears as a burning ball of furious flame. Oh. I can do a quick rundown of the various forms, right? Yes. So, yes, the tradition of La Llorona is you see the, the woman in white weeping by a river. She turns around, scares the shit out of you. You yes. run away. And I've read several stories. There was one, a really interesting book we got called La Llorona Encounters with the Weeping Woman, which is very, it's, it talks about the cultural importance of La Llorona, which we're about to get into. But it has come of those. Where the one story I read where it's like, I was driving in uh, right outside of Santa Fe. And this was back when Santa Fe was a very small city mm. and said that he saw an old woman on the edge of the street. And the same thing. He said, Normally, he's like, now I knew something was different because it was like getting struck by lightning. I saw this old woman weeping. And then as I drove past, she turned to look at me. And where was, should be a face, it was a black hole. And I just turned, I just did a full U turn and just drove away from it. Right? Yeah. The living shadow of him. That's one version. Okay. There's another version that back when Las Vegas was just a small little town, like literally just a gambling outpost. Yeah. Right. There's talk about like guys would go, the guys that were working there, they were building Las Vegas. There was one story of a guy gambling and this beautiful woman. And he said, and he said, how do I put it? It's like, not the normal woman we see in this establishment. Yeah. Right. A, sure. Uh, a Salma Hayek arrives. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, she yeah. comes in beautiful yeah. face, you know, long brown hair and she sits with her dress and she starts gambling and running everybody under the table. And they're all like, this guy's like, she's great. She's great. She's right. like, we don't know what to do with her. And men are literally falling in love with her. And she's saying like, oh, you guys can all come back with me. And so finally one looks down. And he felt the tapping on his foot. And he's like, oh, she's flirting with me. And he looked down and she did not possess a human foot, but it was a hoof. Oh, my God. And, and they freaked out. They were like, La Llorona. And they like, they freaked out. I think these guys are about to be leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> well, the, what's the interesting about leaving Las Vegas was that he went there to die. So it's like he never left. Isn't that something? But then there's also a version of La Llorona that is a tumbling ball of flame. He said one story, a guy saw what looked like a white, the woman in white, and then he realized it was morphing into this tumbling orb. It yeah. looks like a bunch of flames. And he was just like, no, nah, shit, shit. Oh, what the fuck, bro? It's been my bad. You see that, dude? Yeah. And they, it, it arrived and it landed in front of them and then turned into a bundle of blankets. And then the bundle of blankets unfurled, and it was a bunch of babies with razor sharp teeth. Oh ah. my god, that's the worst one yet. And everyone cool. else said that, like, oh, they thought that, like, they're like he was the most trustworthy man in the village. Like, we didn't think he would lie, and it and it haunted him all his days seeing Dang. these these like little carnivorous children. Cenobites. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. When it comes to the roots of La Llorona, the story is far more than a cautionary tale like so many that spring up around cultures that develop around bodies of water. It's also far more than a story that keeps kids from running off on their own. And it's certainly far more than a cautionary tale meant to keep frat boys from drowning in the river. Okay. 
La Llorona is actually one of those rare legends that has its roots in both mythology and highly consequential historical events. It involves stories that involve beautiful women, terrifying creatures, and, according to some opinions, the betrayal of an entire civilization. This Whoa. is one of those stories when I typed in, you know, I always go to my research and I just go to, I go to like YouTube and I go like, la, Llorona. Llorona, and just kind of trying to see it popped up, right? And then the first thing that popped up was this like very thick college level dissertation where it was these two teachers were talking on Zoom and they got really into the culture yeah. of Mexico. And I was like, Oh, that's where you I, checked out. Huh? He's pretty intense. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we're going to be getting all of this. So that part that actually contained information, it's you were just like, no, nah, I don't It's I just don't real that. thick. So we're just going to say, listen, this is where you're, this is gringo time. It Get is to ghost tits already, guys. We're going to do our best <laughs> to break down a lot of very complex themes within Mexican history. Absolutely. And Mexican culture. It's extraordinarily complex. Yes. We're going to, we're absolutely going to do our best. And uh, what to better three this. amigos to do it than us? <laughs> Honestly, I think it's finally time for last podcast on the left to explain Mexico. Do you yes. have anything besides Mexican food? <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Mexico, it's just all food. Uh, let's just, can we go drown ourselves? <laughs> I hear. I don't. Oh, wow. Let's go. Now, since La Llorona is a terrifying Mexican legend, it's only logical that her mythological roots lie in the most terrifying Mesoamerican mythology, that of the Aztecs. And since it's a dark tale, it's only natural that the roots of La Llorona are related to human sacrifice. Now, did the Aztecs practice human sacrifice? Most definitely. They didn't yes. just practice it. They got real good at it. But, oh, yeah, they nailed it. They got pro. But was it a part of everyday life, as it is often claimed? I hope so. Unlikely. Unlikely. Probably not. See Man, the, that was when we toured Rome. We missed out on all the good shit. Yeah, that's <laughs> when we should have been comedians. Ancient Rome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Aztec sacrifice, it's one of the most hotly debated subjects in oh, sure. all of, of like academia. Because who's archaeology. writing the history? Yeah, well, that's the thing. The vast majority of what we know about hmm. human sacrifice comes from the Spaniards who conquered and slaughtered them. Just like everything we know about Druids comes from the Romans who invaded the British Isles. History is written by the victors. And right. just like the Romans, it was in the Spaniards' best interest to paint the Aztecs as pure barbarians. But... When it comes to the crude ethnographies written by Spanish missionaries, mm -hmm. they were actually usually pretty reliable when it came to the American indigenous people. And I'm just happy that in no way does the American history of our land have a similar tale. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nothing but we're straight shooters. Yeah. Straight shooters. Well, they're usually pretty reliable, but the purpose is, of course, Demise. nefarious. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, these chronicles of Mesoamerican tribal and cultural practices, these were guides for future missionaries to pervert existing cultural beliefs mm -hmm. and turn them into Christian beliefs. Because look at how fucking well it worked with Christmas and Easter. Yeah, that rebrand was complete. Yeah. Like, for example, like when it comes to societies like the Aztecs, the missionaries can say like, oh, y'all fucking love blood? Yeah, well, we fuck do. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Like blood. There's this fucking big bloody dude. He's always being tortured. His face is always cool. bleeding. He's got this big fucking stab wound. Right. It's always bleeding. Fucking get him a bandit. He's though. got fucking nails driven into his hands and feet. Yeah. Those are always fucking bleeding. Fucking sweet. And guess what, right. bro? Yeah. We drink his blood once a week. Yeah. It's awesome. You'll love it. Uh -huh. Do it or die. Fuck so yeah, that's dude. the selling point. Yeah, man. I drank <laughs> blood last week and I got mono from it, man. Isn't that nice? It's great that you can love something you're full of. <laughs> it really Isn't is. that nice? But the, the, the story of La Llorona is completely is tied into all of these mechanisms. Where are we to, who writes the stories of ancient groups? What do they serve? Like what purpose do the writings serve for the people that are using it for their own benefit? And also how they got this information? Because one of the actual origins of La Llorona to like kind of talks about what I mistakenly said incorrectly on the stream, like the idea that the conquistadors, when they arrived, they were outnumbered by the Aztecs and they're sort of like, it, this is fake. Like, this is false. So the idea that they were so overwhelmed by their technology that they just kind of gave up the ghost. And also the uh, the thing about, like, them believing that, you know, he was, Hernando Cortez was, was god a god. Or... That's totally untrue. Totally okay. false. But what they did was that they worked their way, very similar to the CIA has left their imprint around the United States. If you bring Italian up NK Ultra into this again, Walter. <laughs> it's true. Okay. How I was it, there. How does it connect? I agree with Henry on okay. this wholeheartedly, actually. It's a very Thank good you. analogy. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying we've just seen. With they go in okay. with the conquistadors would motivate the larger group 
of Aztecs, right? They would motivate the people that were on the lower rungs of society. Okay. Because at this time, the society had already structured itself into a way where there was a group of a controlling class that ran everything and basically did what we're kind of going through right now, where they are essentially like making sure that no one on the bottom got anything. When did the conquistadors sprinkle crack everywhere? This is <laughs> this is basically what they did, but with La Llorona. That's, uh, La Llorona's the, the crack. Yeah. I got you. It's okay. but kind, it's, kind of, kind of, kind of, sort, kind of, sort, kind of, sort, kind of yeah. But the idea that they would manipulate Manipulate the bigger, lower class to rise up against the controlling classes to help them flip the entire country yeah. to gotcha. them. And there is one woman who helped them do that, which we'll get to here in a second. Cool. But those chronicles that we were talking about with the missionaries, they also worked as like a demon glossary. So the missionaries could properly recast previously revered gods as demons who have been tricking the indigenous people into worshiping them for centuries. Mm. Oh my God, it's so lucky that we came along. You've been worshiping a demon. Oh, You're the entirety of your civilization. You could wow. tell he'd he be a snake, right? He'd be a snake <laughs> and you see the snake and you think, yeah. oh, uh, that's a, oh my God, I love this, 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 this protector snake. He come, he break, he makes society. He help all of us, but turn out, he a demon. <laughs> well, the gods really weren't the problem. I think maybe the human sacrifice and things like that was an issue. But no, the Aztecs what were, were we a fully doing? functioning society. Yes, they were. Oh, they the didn't Az need the conquistadors' help. The Aztecs were an extraordinarily advanced society. Yeah. All of the Mesoamerican cultures were extraordinarily they advanced. Were fine. Also, can we yeah. just say this? Everyone's like, oh, they were so unbelievably extraordinary with technology. They had a clock. <laughs> they made a big clock. Well, they had, that was, it was a calendar. It was a, it was a, it was wow. a calendar. They had, they I'll do it. They also I, had canal. They had a, and horses. They had a great. Well, they didn't have horses. I thought the Span that's where the, the Spaniards brought horses. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They showed up with horses. Yeah, they're they all like, what the fuck horse. is this thing? Yeah. They were that's very big ass dog. They were confused about the horses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When they saw men on horses, they did think, like, holy shit, that's a man. That's one creature. It's a centaur. Yeah. yeah. A centaur. Yeah. But the, the horses were a big deal, as were the guns. Uh, yeah, but well, big hats. But the Aztecs were also incredible warriors. But we'll get into the reasons later okay. why they were not able to to overtake or even fight back against the Spaniards all that well. Hop right into it. But to the point of human sacrifice... Let's get right into and, it. Uh, yeah. But to the point of human sacrifice in Aztec culture, uh, being at least a part of the overall melange, it partly survived in oral tradition through La Llorona. See, just before the Spaniards arrived, and we're going to get into Aztec mythology right now. Cool. Cool. Sacrifices were given to the Great Mother, Coatlicue. And I'm going to do my best to... I, You're not, this is not too bad. Thank you. You, 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 you may be able to work your way through a Oaxacan menu pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> and Coatlicue was uh, usually depicted wearing a long dress made of tangled rivers and drowning men. Yes. Wow. <laughs> In some versions of the Aztec creation myth, she created the world. Now, Aztec mythology is fucking crazy violent. Sweet. But so is Greek mythology. Yeah. Remember fucking Saturn ate his son alive, the Titans. All that shit's incredibly violent. Sometimes it, uh, that son ain't good eating. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. That's not to mention, again, the crucifixion of Jesus. Yeah, it's right. been portrayed as extraordinarily violent. In other words, a lot of belief systems have violent roofs. I think all have of them, don't they? I think all of them involve some kind of blood. Plains Indian tribes usually don't. Uh, their creation myths are usually very peaceful. They have to do with the land, coyotes, stuff like that. Yeah, those are actually... Boring! <laughs> Yeah, they should have. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, and, that and, sounds you know, awesome. And the Jewish creation myth is that one's truly boring. Like, what is it? Let there be light. Well, Kabbalah, God, the, 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 oh, trans sure. no, the transmission a, of nothingness to somethingness. Yeah, Genesis. Law, and God said, let there be light. And then that's it. God created yeah. the heaven and earth. God's and took just seven a fucking days. executive <laughs> just <laughs> saying horror <laughs> shit. He's yeah. just saying, you know, it'd actually be nice if there was some light in here. Yeah. And then he makes everybody else go scurry around and make it happen. Garden yeah. of Eden. Yeah, I, I bet you they really enjoyed that series called Family Pies. They all <laughs> fucked each other. All, according to that, we're all incest babies. Family pies. We are. Yeah. We're we are not. all of humankind's incest babies at some point. All of humankind. We've been getting caught in fucking washers and dryers since the beginning of time. <laughs> uh, you got to figure out how to clean these clothes better. Maybe that's one of those things that La Llorona is warning against because if she's stuck down in down the river, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. don't you come and do your naughty stepfather <laughs> business with her. I wonder if you did just leave a pile of dirty clothes if she'd wash it. Well, let's move on. <laughs> well, some people argue that the Aztecs are, they're mostly misunderstood, you know, that they just loved violent stories. Yeah. Because as we know, just because people have violent interests, that doesn't mean that they're violent people. In no. fact, most of the time, as our audience knows all too well, 
it's usually the exact opposite. Yeah, everybody I know who looks scary a lot of time is the most gentle, loving person in the face. Everybody I know with face tattoos right. in 2023 is an incredibly sweet person. And now we live in a world where khakis and blue shirts or Means red shirts. Means the fucking devil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, it used to be Target employee and now it's neo-Nazis. Yes. Yeah. But as one of the violent Aztec myths go that are related to La Llorona, a goddess named Siwakoatl helped the god Quetzalcoatl create the current human race by grinding up the bones of the people yes. from the previous ages. Well, using, I'm sorry, I really, and that's using uh, Quetzalcoatl's blood. I'm uh, sorry, I gotta take a shit. I'm gonna waddle out of here. That is, <laughs> this is great. This is really, really good. My, well, my nickname say, was Crapawaddle. <laughs> We're really trying. I'm really trying. So your name well, was- uh, see, uh, Siwakoatl, by the way, uh, was uh, Coatlicue's daughter. We're just gonna get You're so married to a, e- to a non, uh, in, she's, she's fluent in Spanish. This isn't Spanish. This is Aztec. I don't fucking know that. <laughs> okay. She's, no. she yeah, she's, a yeah, she's fluent. And she's also, she's not Mexican. She's a Colombian and Peruvian. Yeah, you piece I didn't of say shit. It. I didn't say she was Mexican. <laughs> I can't Did fucking I? believe it. I didn't say she was Mexican. How dare you? <laughs> you beautiful, the beautiful people all around. <laughs> Everyone is beautiful. <laughs> Well, Coatlicue, meanwhile, was decapitated by her children on the orders of one of her daughters, the moon goddess, who, with shades of La Llorona, was upset with her mother because her mother had become pregnant by a man who was not the moon goddess's father. Okay. There's a bit of infidelity here. There's a little bit of a telenovela. A little bit, little bit. So even if you're a god, you get cheated on? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. God, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Women be trifling. Mm-hmm. I guess so. But from the bloody neck stump of Coatlicue sprung the fruit of that forbidden union, the Aztec god of war, Huitzilopochtli. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. And seeing that his mother had been killed, Huitzilopochtli dismembered hundreds of his siblings Whoa. and decapitated the moon goddess. He's mad. He then threw her head into the sky, and that head became the moon. Oh, wow. I see. Oh. Yeah, they have the coolest I mean, fucking myths. It seems to be awesome. none of you seem to pay attention to me unless I'm full. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. Oh, now yeah, you're all please. taking pictures. Oh, okay. Moon God, oh, that's no, fine. we love you, Moon Goddess. Thank you for no, the tides. No, 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 no reason. Reason. Literally, Why we worship should you? you? It's no reason to oh, call. It's just, we love you. I'll call you. I speak to you every night, Moon Goddess. I held you in my I know. Thank you. vagina for <laughs> nine know. months. They cut a hole in me. I they know, cut a Moon God. I love you, Mama Moon. <laughs> I well, love you. Well, in another La Llorona connection, Siwakoatl, she of the bone grinding, she was also the patroness of mothers who die in childbirth. Because in Aztec culture, childbirth was compared to warfare, and women who died in childbirth were honored as fallen soldiers. It was extremely nice. dangerous at yeah. the time. It was extremely yeah. dangerous yeah. until like 19... 19- 65. Right. Ah, I would say more like 9, 2005. Damn. Yeah. It's still dangerous. It's it still. ain't easy to do. Mm-hmm. In a terrifying twist, these women became skull-faced spirits known as the Sihuateo, who would haunt crossroads at night where they would do what else but steal children. Why the fuck did the conquistadors change this culture? I would have been like one of them. Went, I would have been like one of the invaders being like, you know what? You guys are really cool. <laughs> you guys I'm are crushing this. I don't, I'm it. with you. Hat. Yeah, 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 like, shit. Why don't we arm y'all and be with you guys and we all like, hang out here? Yeah, and Skull then, God. Yeah, and then eventually we'll turn it around and go back and conquer Europe. Dude, that would have been Europe crazy. Europe could have used a little bit of cool shit. Yeah, because yeah, I, mean, I, I want to say a lot of this, people talk about, you know, obviously that some of this is very... A symbolic of Mexican American culture, or like a kind of a, the way we deal with each other. But this is really an anti Spain podcast. <laughs> and I'm still like, we need to go for Spain. I think that's where a lot of the anger needs to be directed towards because they started it, making the plates smaller. All these uh, fucking guys do all day yeah. long. They take off all afternoon. Yeah. They're just, they just get to sleep. Absolutely. The rest of us got to go to work. Mm-hmm. Shaped like a boot. <laughs> that's Italy. <laughs> no, that's Spain. <laughs> That's Italy. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it came to an urban setting, it was said that Siwakoatl roamed the canals of the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, wearing a cradleboard on her back. Oh, yeah, the cradleboard. That's like the little backpack for babies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But on that cradleboard was not a child, but an obsidian flint knife, yes. the kind used in human sacrifice. Oh. 
Oh, that's a cool name of like a new John Wick style movie called like Single Dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, you just got a baby carrier, just like I mean, full of guns. Yeah. Well, I like the idea of just a cool knife. We're yeah. knife fighting back. Oh, yeah. Obsidian Watching knife old Jackie yeah. Chan films the other day, which oh, is yeah. on TV. He uses that's... everything. So cool. Yeah. Well, ironically, though, the story that partly inspired La Llorona was not meant for kids. Instead, it seems like it was aimed more towards young parents. At least this is kind of my interpretation of this tale as I read it. In what sounds like a cautionary tale meant to discourage mothers from leaving their children unattended, a woman mm. goes to the market but leaves the child behind in a crib while she goes to shop and hang out with her friends. Madeline McCann. <laughs> Don't bring them into this. They're innocent. But when she returns... The child is gone, replaced with an obsidian flint knife. Cool, this, that says. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> Wait, yeah, yeah. I guess. Whoa, my and, fucking daughter's a knife now. This is you know, awesome. <laughs> most of the time when your kid is kidnapped, they don't leave anything. Nope. Maybe a ransom note or something, but. Well, this signifies that Siwa Coatl has traded the knife for the child, and the child has been taken away on the crib, strapped to Siwa Coatl's back. Man, you know knife you, fairy. Yeah. Knife fairy is <laughs> yeah. really cool. What you can do is just say, they're going to have a better life that way. Yeah. And look at my new knife. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this knife. It's kind of cool. Life from your grave. Well, to round out the Aztec influence on La Llorona, when it comes to mythology, another likely inspiration for this cultural amalgamation is a creator creature known as the Hungry Woman. Yes, this creature, a lot of times what it'll That's do is... That's a name I can say. When you sit <laughs> to order food at a restaurant, she'll say, oh... I'm not very hungry right now. But then when you order something, <laughs> yeah. she'll take half. <laughs> <laughs> or when you're sitting at home and you're trying to decide what to get for delivery, she'll Guys. say that she's hungry. And yet every suggestion you make, she, she says... No. no. Oh, guys, this is not your podcast. The husbands can be right sometimes every now and again. <laughs> well, this wandering god, the hungry woman, she is covered with dozens of mouths that cry out not for children, but for food. This is awesome. It said, it's cool. Yeah. It said that the hungry woman is Kwatlikwe herself, the devouring mother who contains both the womb and the gray. Yes. We're talking, this is like gangbang gold right here. Because <laughs> all the mouths. All the mouths. All the mouths. I actually was thinking, Bang this of is blow a good, bangs, I feel like them. the hungry woman's a good new, like, that, you know, chicken, you have like a chicken pop up. Oh, sure. You're a hungry, hungry woman, woman and hungry you just woman. see all the different mouths, but there's a chicken sandwich for each one of the mouths. And see, I actually love that idea. And Ben, I think you're getting in the get this game bag, it's not going to go the way you want it Why? because there's so many mouths. All you're going to see is dudes' butts. Uh, I hate that. Think, think about it. Think about I it. Hate you're that. only going to see dudes, but dude, you just I was show watching, up. I was... and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm late. And then you just see like two guys on step ladders at both steps. <laughs> yeah. You see two guys like in a triangle on each other's backs. Yeah. La La Rona is really just a parable about being late to the gangbang. <laughs> yeah, so far. The hungry woman, I suppose, more the parable in that case. But while La Llorona obviously has roots in Aztec mythology, she owes perhaps even more of her existence to the 1519 arrival of the Spanish conquistador Hernando Cortes. Ooh. He was there seeking the three G's. God, gold, and glory. Oh. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the glory? Uh, this is where it gets complicated. Yeah. Now, what's fascinating in this context is that 10 years before Cortez arrived, the Aztecs began witnessing a series of bad omens that they believed were signaling the arrival of mysterious men who would wage war on Tenochtitlan. Hmm. Laying some very strong groundwork for the future legend of La Llorona, omen number six involved a native woman covered in chalk dressed all in white. According to accounts, she wandered the streets of Tenochtitlan and was heard crying and screaming throughout the night, saying, My children, we now have to live far away. Or, My children, where should I take you? Disneyland! No. Not now! <laughs> Supposedly, this woman was the aforementioned goddess Siwakawadl. Seven years after that omen, a famine began, and Siwakawadl again appeared in the streets of Tenochtitlan, crying in hunger. She would say, Oh, my children, we are about to be lost. Finally, to make all of this as horrible as possible, these omens were linked at the very end of the Spanish conquest. 
when it was said that the hungry woman ate a baby boy in his crib. Wow. Hungry indeed. But it extends. So this is really kind of about like these, what they learned was you could take these legends and you could flip them for their own good. Like the conquistadors right, yeah. understood that if you got in and start to understand how we speak their language, how they speak to each other culturally, that's the best way to manipulate a people. You well, wrap a baby in a tortilla, you cook that up. I mean, that is not the worst. You know, it comes down to it. He, I, who knows? Not the worst. Now, when you say not the worst. If you're going to eat human flesh, I would assume a baby's flesh is slightly more tender, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. You've already done this. You've opened <laughs> it up. Just, and just, actually, I know from accounts of cannibals that they say that those that have eaten baby meat, they say that it's very similar to fish, that it actually ugh, falls I, apart. Yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't you did bring, this. I was trying mm-hmm. to bring some levity to it, it and I realized be, I, it was the opposite. It would be incredible in a yeah. taco. Now we're about to get into history here, and okay. it might be a little bit controversial. I know some of our listeners might have some very strong opinions on this one way or another. And you're correct. <laughs> we don't know. We've learned as much as we could about this subject, but it's, for some people, it's just a line in history book, and for some people, there's a lot of ideological stances attached to this character in history. Yeah, and right. th- you know things that reverberate to this very day. Are we going to get into CRT? Fantastic. CRT. Well, critical race theory. Oh. It's a joke about modern America. Modern America. Modern America. Oh, modern America. God, you guys. <laughs> we don't have kids. I tried to talk to Wendy about the racist beginnings of this country. And she, she, she kept saying, she's something about pulling the ladder up and doesn't care what anybody else hops and She's already made it to this country and she doesn't right, care. Let's move on. No, we don't need to get into the details of how Cortez destroyed the Aztec Empire so quickly. But for the purposes of our story, we're going to discuss the controversial woman who helped him do it. Her given name was Malitzen, but the Mexican people would come to know her as La Malinche, a.k.a. The Tongue. Oh, did she uh, meet the Dalai Lama? The, oh my God, yeah, kiss my tongue. The so tongue. My tongue. <laughs> that is such a fucking, that's a scary, the tongue. She was very, she, she's controversial. Controversial. Okay. Now the legend goes that La Malinche had been a member of Aztec nobility who'd been captured and enslaved by the Mayans at the age of eight or nine. But as it turned out, she had a knack for languages. And by the time Cortes arrived from Spain many years later, La Malinche was fluent in the languages of both the Aztec and Mayan empires. Wow. Now, when Cortes first arrived, he was given a large peace offering by the Mayans, which included 20 enslaved women. Amongst those women was La Malinche, the enslaved Aztec noble. She was baptized as a Catholic and given the European name of Marina. Seems like the peace offering was actually exceptionally violent. Oh, very much so. (laughs) Yes, 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 yes. And if you thought La La Malinche was very interesting, you should have met La, I don't know how to say butt in Spanish. (laughs) That one was just called the butt. La, la, La culo. Yeah, yeah. She was nice. Very, very good. Yeah. Now, since La... <laughs> really? Wow, I'm just we are. Yeah. But the nice thing is, I actually saw someone hit a Grand Slam, and they barely even hit the ball, but everyone in the infield did so poorly. So we're doing okay. That's all we got to do. Is <laughs> it, it's all about an in-the-park home run here. Yeah. Now, since La Malinche was reportedly beautiful, she was given to a Spanish nobleman. But when Hernando Cortez discovered how good she was with languages, he took her as his own personal slave, and she thereafter quickly learned Spanish. Hmm. As an interpreter and eventually an advisor, La Malinche participated in every major event associated with the Spanish conquest of Mexico all the way to the fall of Tenochtitlan in 1521. She was like a mirror universe version of Sacagawea. Evil Mexican Pocahontas. Yeah. Now, reportedly, Cortez told one of his men that next to God, La Malinche was the most important factor to his success. Now, soon after the Aztecs were conquered, La Malinche gave birth to Hernando Cortez's son, Martin. Martin is therefore considered the first mestizo, the first boy that was a mix of the Spanish and indigenous people that now make up the nation of Mexico. She's oh. sometimes seen as the mother of the Mexican people. They didn't call him baby tongue, did they? No, 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 no. no. I, I don't ever want to meet anybody <laughs> with the nickname baby tongue. <laughs> oh, God, oh. Hey, my name's oh, Greg, dude, but you can the... call me baby tongue. Yo, I need like, to oh, see you're that. Here for the, are you here for the uh, the interview? For the... <laughs> what if you are on a date and everything is going great and they open their mouth What's and going they on, baby tongue? Yeah, you little tiny Just tongue. Just a little like, tiny uh, tongue. I lost uh. most of my tongue in the tongue wars in 2013. <laughs> However, the people of Mexico who have an opinion on La Malinche are usually split between one extreme or the other. 
Some see her as, as I said, the symbolic mother of the new Mexican people. Yes, and, the new Mexico. She's yeah. like this idea. She's that the, the com- combination of cultures. Yeah, she uh, is also seen as a woman who might have helped mitigate the suffering of her people from the inside. Someone who saw there's no way we're going to beat the Spanish. There's no way we're going to beat these guys. So let's try to bring an end to this as soon as possible. She probably said something like, it's not selling out. It's buying in. It's buying in. <laughs> yes. And other people say that since she was enslaved, that meant that she had no choice but to collaborate. Yes. And they also say that she is unfairly made a scapegoat. Because of that. Yeah. Because, you know, in because- Mexican culture, like Mexican culture can be very misogynistic. Latino culture can be very misogynistic. And some uh, Latino feminists see her as an unfairly mal- Blind woman. Yeah, okay. because again, what you're seeing is a guy who used her inside knowledge to help gain the trust of mm-hmm. many people and then use that, you know, it depends on what you think. Do you, Are you happy yeah, but with not- Hernando Cortez's actions? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, uh, but the biggest thing was that, you know, through her interpretation, what she was able to interpret, as Henry said earlier, like she was able to very quickly interpret Hernando Cortez's intentions to these lower classes of the Aztec people. So he was able to form, basically he was able to show up, form an army, and fuck people up really fast. Okay. And that's the thing. Through that, other people see La Malinche as a traitor of the highest order who hastened the defeat of the Aztecs when she really didn't have to. In other words, it's not her fucking choice to say who should live and who should die. Right. That's why the La Llorona story is so, the, the way people talk about it, it's just this mixture of, rage and sadness and forlornness because it's many things. It's this idea of it's a complicated ghost. Very it's complicated. It's this thing where right. you look at it, you don't know really where it's coming from. Like what what were the intentions of this of this if it was indeed a real force? It's 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 symbolic of that. This idea of right. like uh, are we settling ourselves out like a mother who kills her own children? It's a, it's a symbol. It's a symbolic yeah. example of like quote unquote selling out your country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's why Wisconsin's great. They have a thing called a hodag. <laughs> Which is just a just big fat. ass beaver. Yeah, it literally is just a thing that sits there, and I think it only says hodak. Like I think that's why it's called the hodak. And they also yeah, have exactly. a sandwich called a hodak. Yeah, exactly. It's a you whole know, thing. The Bigfoot's just a big guy. Just big old foot. Yeah. Yep. Well, some of these people argue that, you know, because of La Malinche, the Aztecs didn't have enough time to adapt to the Spanish ways of warfare. That eventually, mm. if they would have been able to just kind of battle them on their own, they would have figured out how to go against guns. They would have figured out how to kill horses. Like, it wouldn't have been... They would have at least been able to, to fight fuck for as long... Up. To yeah. fuck some shit up for as long as they could until, of course, the smallpox set in, and then after that, they're fucked. But... Ugh. And others say that, you know, she could have refused to collaborate altogether. She could have chose yeah, death. she got murdered. She, you know I mean? But she could have chose death over the betrayal of her people. Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing is that it Tough goes, options. Tough options but all it's around. Also, yeah. It's about a ghost story about somebody that's ca- damned by their choices because also you're in a, oh, you're a woman in society so you're kind of forced to do these things mm-hmm. and then you're kind of punished for it by society. Yes. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you know I might be misinterpreting this but from what I can tell like Malinche is still like a slang term. It's still used today. It's used by some people as a sort of like it's like an Uncle Tom pejorative. Benedict <laughs> Arnold. Yeah. Yep. I don't actually don't even know. I don't know the story of Benedict Arnold. It's a whole thing. It's it's more, it's it's actually much worse than Benedict Arnold because oh. this is like somebody who, it's basically someone who prefers Eurocentric cultures to their own. I would Prime- compare it to the fact that Joe Gatto left the Impractical Jokers. How? <laughs> Oh, oh well, it was a divorce. He was forced to in the divorce. Yeah. yeah. Well, a prime example of this, a prime recent example of this is the Latino white supremacist who killed eight people in Dallas. What? Two weeks ago? Dude, there do, like even, a, do you even remember? I was speaking of this on Able Against Top Pat, and it's that it, race and ethnicity, different things. It's a whole thing. It's very and complicated. It's yes. a very complicated. There's a very good article in The Atlantic this week about it. Whoa. I was speaking about The Atlantic the other Whoa, day. What is happening Henry, here? Is <laughs> Should I room? break out the Metamucil? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Are we going to do some shots of wheatgrass yeah. and shit? But no matter what the modern interpretation of La Malinche's legacy may be, whether it's one way or the other. Yeah, we don't know. At the time, in the 1500s, she was definitely seen as a villain to the people of Mexico when she was alive. And as we shall soon see, her actions and the subsequent consequences slowly began to intertwine with Aztec mythology, thus helping to create La Llorona. Now, once the Aztecs were conquered, the Spaniards began to recast the Aztec mythological heroes as villains. One Spanish cleric said that the Aztecs' ancestors had erred 
in their worship of these gods, specifically mm. gods like Siwa Kowadl, who had terrified the Aztec people throughout the night by her extensive wailing and crying. It's like, why do you want to worship that guy when you right. could have Jesus? Yeah, Jesus never cried once. No, he was Jesus. a manly man. <laughs> Jesus fucking got caught. And murdered. All right. <laughs> I, I, like my, I like my saviors not caught. I like my saviors not caught. <laughs> but also, I think Jesus, there's a whole bunch of shit where he was crying like a bunch. Mm. Well, the whole point with Gethsemane, he was trying to get out yeah, of it. Yeah. And then there's also the concept of a sacrificial God. Like you have to, you, we are all supposed to sacrifice something because we're not good enough for heaven. Right. We must kill some part of something that is belongs to us in order to get all the good stuff in the end. So we make sure that we live like a really shit ass, boring yeah. life <laughs> on this planet. And then, then we can go to the fun part. Party. Again, Gilles de Ray, Michael Jackson, just like a, a killer, killers, all these guys just yeah. hanging out out there, man. Yeah, never oh. forget Jeffrey Dahmer. No, just loving life. Mm -hmm. They're going to go with Epstein on that one. But all right. <laughs> well, sure enough, by 1550, a few decades after the Spanish defeat of the Aztecs, the goddess Siwakoatl had become a ghostly white apparition of a sobbing woman wandering the canals. She was now named... La Llorona. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> now, this first La Llorona was indeed a cautionary tale, but it seems like the first lesson La Llorona was meant to teach was, don't fuck a conquistador, okay? because you ain't La Malinche. Yeah, you're not trying to be a La Malinche either. It that ain't going to happen. That was the first happen. lesson? That was the first lesson. Don't suck that dick. Don't What's... fuck a conquistador, because basically it was common for Spaniards to promise indigenous women the moon. I'm going to make you a noble woman. I'm going to take you back to Spain. I'm going to mm. give you a better mm. life. All you got to do is fuck me and everything mm. will be great. These men. Yeah, but uh -huh. as soon as the relationship became boring or inconvenient, mm. the Spaniards would toss the women and whatever children they'd fathered aside and of course you tell the story of like if you do this if this happens to you then you could lose your mind like la llorona you might murder your children like la llorona yeah, it'll hollow out your whole life you've yeah. traded out your culture yeah you've yeah you've yeah. traded out everything and your entire life will fall apart and you will wander turn you will wander the river the canals for all eternity that lesson still holds true to this day be careful who you have kids with because yeah they might just end up going to quick trip and never coming back mm -hmm. however when it comes to La Malinche, it's hard to say whether La Llorona was inspired by rumors concerning La Malinche or whether people applied the La Llorona story to La Malinche after her death in order to make her death far more tragic than it really was. Come see, come see. Yeah. I think it's a little half a, half a one. Yeah. Half a one. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Now, it's thought that La Llorona first appeared about a year before La Malinche died. But a story sprung up around La Malinche's death that was, at the very least, the first half of the La Llorona tale. It was said that when Hernando Cortez announced that he would be returning to Spain with his mestizo son Martin, but without La Malinche, hmm. she took a sacrificial obsidian knife and plunged it into her son's heart in the manner of an Aztec sacrifice, then did the same to herself. Good storytelling. Very good storytelling. Yeah. Damn. Now, that, of course, wasn't true at all. After Cortez left, La Malinche married a different Spanish nobleman and died fat and happy, as far as we know. Just get all fat and happy. Get all fat and <laughs> sassy. Yeah. Cook some soups, soups. Eat some bread, some desserts. <laughs> but it does say something that people wanted her to die a horrible death. Oh, yeah. They wanted this to be real. They yes. wanted to be. They were very mm -hmm. hopeful that she was the phantom that was crying, searching, looking for their lost children, because that would feel like a fate appropriate for the person that sold this out. Yeah, it's, it is. It is 50 50, right? Because it's, it's like very, the very... greatest revenge is to live a happy life. You know, like I'll even I'll say Corey Feldman. Good for you. Yeah, you're winning. But Dick Cheney is also still alive. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so it's like his revenge. It's like, ah, yeah. yeah. Well, in fact, after the Mexican Revolution of 1810, Mexican nationalists began to directly compare La Malinche to La Llorona, although in their minds, La Malinche was far worse. Because after all, La Llorona had only drowned her own children. And those were her kids. Yeah. <laughs> You're allowed to, I took you, yeah. I brought you into you this world. Take take out. Out. Yeah. Yeah. But La Malinche had, according to the you know opinions of these people, she had condemned her entire people by aiding and abetting the cruel con who had tried erasing the Aztec and Mayan identities from Mexico completely, not to mention mm. how many people they fucking killed. So it's now an amalgamation. Oh, yes. Well, a then, series of... 
sort of dystopian gods, kind of. And that's why the ghost holds such a powerful cultural hold over many people. And and it continues and it evolves. And again, it's just how many people have seen La Llorona? How many people have talked about this style? And yes, the Banshees are in other cultures. There's other cultures that, but the the Weeping Woman. Which just shows us that the Irish aren't great at investing properly. And that's the problem. (laughs) The leprechauns, you don't understand. Just, it is nice to put it in a mutual fund. Put it in a Mm -hmm. lockbox. Now, when it came to horror stories involving the conquistadors, some went far beyond mere consorting, but many of those stories still had a sort of La Llorona ending. In one tale, the conquistadors who first arrived in Mexico were so taken by the beauty of Aztec children that they kidnapped the most beautiful kids and gave them to their Spanish wives as gifts. Uh, but with the kids, there, I thought you were going to say women. Yeah, no. thanks. They were like... Yeah. yeah, they're like, Ugh. look at these beautiful, beautiful children. <laughs> when you just get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I, you got any, you got anything else? <laughs> I thought something like a little older. I mean, nope. got, is, got a, is there got a necklace or something? Here's a screaming, terrified <laughs> child for you to take <laughs> care of. Uh, well, oh well, there goes the milk. Lord. I thought flowers. <laughs> yeah, were kind I of didn't bad. know it was gonna happen so fast. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Here comes that milk. <laughs> you know how to be a mom. Well, when this became That's a- all, it is is just shooting <laughs> your <laughs> <team> milk. Whoa, <laughs> men and women, huh? <laughs> Well, when this became a trend, it was said that some Aztec women killed their children rather than give them up to the hated Spanish, and La Llorona was one such woman. But in an extra twist, this La Llorona kills whatever child she finds during her wandering, perhaps echoing the old sacrificial Aztec beliefs. A child for a child. Yes, child versus child. Yeah, that would be cool. Right from your grave. But although the rumors and legends ran rampant, there actually was a case in Mexico City around 1550, which may have been a direct inspiration for part of the La Llorona story. Hmm. Although in this tale, no water is involved. Water seems to be something that is applied afterwards. Okay. Here, an Aztec princess fell in love with a nobleman and bore him twins. The nobleman promised to marry her, but of course married someone else instead. These men and twins. (laughs) The princess showed up on the night of his wedding party to confront him. But when he humiliated her in public and turned her away, she returned home and stabbed her twins to death with a dagger that the nobleman had given to her as a gift. The thing is, how do you tell the chick that you're married that you want to add one more? Mm. It's such a hard conversation. And I say, you know, you, you know what you need to start with some nice music. Oh, send him nice music. You know, you show up be like, baby. You guys like each other. Why don't you guys just try to kiss each other? You guys, you guys. <laughs> you make yourself the male cuck. They just, you know, do what they do. Yeah, you yeah. guys like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah maybe it's, they didn't. But it's they a don't hard like it conversation. Too. It's a hard. Unless they love each other. It's a hard mm. sell on the wedding night. Well, yeah, because it's all like you didn't plan for it. Yeah. You don't have an extra burner plate for her. <laughs> yeah, everyone's you know. mad. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole thing. Well, having lost her mind during the act of murder... This woman then wandered the streets in torn, blood-soaked clothing, crying for her children. For some reason, I think it was because she used the dagger, she was found guilty of both murder and sorcery, and she was Uh therefore hanged for her crimes. She was going to be hanged either way, but they just tacked sorcery on there. Pop it in there, make sure she's extra hanged. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, still a child murderer. Gotcha. Well, from there, it was just a short jump to turn her into a wandering spirit who searches for her murdered children. And because the people of Mexico needed a myth that kept kids away from water, all of these stories of wandering, child-murdering women, they were all combined with the trauma of the conquistador conquests. And it all got mixed up to create La Llorona. And, you know, it is an interesting compromise getting rid of Title 42, but then putting the statue of La Llorona (laughs) right by the border. (laughs) It's really intense. There's also something to the taboo of a mother killing her children. Oh, yeah. That is, yeah. in certain yeah. people, well, it people, makes it's her a more scary. Some yeah, people are just not into it. Yeah. I know. But it, yeah, it is, it's a, it's a specific taste. It's an acquired taste it to taboo. kill your children. But it's weird because they are really as pointed because you mm-hmm. see how many stories. I was just following the Letitia Stouch case, which is another case of a woman killing her son. Like, I got really mm. into this year for some reason. I've been watching a lot of, of interrogation course, footage. Vallow, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I've been really getting into negligent child homicide ne- child child negligence uh-huh. I was a homicidal child negligence when sure. you say you're and, getting into it I like mean, it's like cocky it's like me and a couple of parents meet up a couple times a week and just <laughs> talk about how to ignore best yeah 
Yeah. yeah. You know, well, like, and you as the non-parent. Which child do we torture? Yeah. And you as the non-parent, oh. you get to show up and think outside the box. Well, that's the thing. I'm yeah. objective. Yeah. And I can say, I can right. look at their kids and be like, well, she are. She did her legs are not going to make her good for any sports. So I feel like that's <laughs> yeah. the one we got to starve out. Yeah. That's great. Now, while La Llorona certainly still lives on an oral tradition to this day, back in 1986, a woman in Houston brought the legend of La Llorona to life. Huh. A 29 year old woman named Juana Lee. This is like the live action Lion King remake. Yeah, this is scary. <laughs> a 29 year old woman named Juana Laija took her seven children on a bus to the Buffalo Bayou River, where the kids thought they were going to have a picnic. Oh, yeah, we're no. going to have a picnic, and all your favorites are going to be there. Beethoven's going to be there. <laughs> and it's going to be bad. Prince is going to come. Oh. And but you guys love Zsa Zsa Gabor. Dude, honestly, you just, if Prince and Beethoven could rock and roll from one concert. Holy hell. That'd be nice. <laughs> That'd be nice. That's just such, That'd be great. I just... I don't know. Ah, I don't know if the egos know would match. Huh? I don't know if the funny. egos would match. No, it's they're getting paid. Idea. They're like, getting paid. They just feel like they'd all be like, I work for so long. <laughs> I know. They like to, to do relax. it. Like, oh, so we got to do a gig now? He likes to do it. Oh, man. Just those rock and roll fantasies. Just Beethoven and Prince. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm that I had a little bit of class. Rock and roll finesse. jam. Oh, man. That's the best rock and roll jam I ever heard of. Yeah, it's no spunk in the love dicks. Whatever the fuck you listen to. <laughs> uh, we're doing a 10-parter on the locks. Yeah, they're Don't the locks. Don't make fun of our other highly successful show. Yes. Yes. The lungs make a great... They're, they're uh, fart metal? Guys, uh, yeah, the Doobie Brothers, that is pedestrian. We're actually talking a lot about it. They're called the Octopus Bunch, and they only do songs about shovels. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great. 100%, Bye. and I love it. You know what? That's how I choose to live. Nay, no, that's I'm how not... I must live. Yep. Great. Well, indeed, once this woman and her children arrived at Buffalo... Arrive. I don't know why I can't say Buffalo Bayou. Buffalo keep saying, Bayou. I keep saying Buffalo Bayou. It's because uh, there's no such thing as a bayou in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, well, once they arrived at Buffalo Bayou Park, located just outside of downtown Houston. Oh, this none is of this is real. right in the middle of Houston. Oh, wow. okay. Juana took her kids to the banks of the river and just started tossing them into the water oh, one by one. Jesus. That's a terrible Olympic sport, and I'm glad they cut it out. Yeah, ah. It's really bad. All right. Her eldest, however, an 11-year-old, escaped and ran to get help. Good. A passerby named Chris Sweet, meanwhile, heard screaming and turned to see Juana struggling to throw the last remaining child into the water. Ugh. But by the time Sweet ran to help, five were already in the water and two were already floating face down. Oh, Jeez. no. After Sweet jumped in, he was joined by a security guard named Gilbert Chavez, and together they were able to save three kids. But the five-year-old and the six-year-old, the six-year-old named Judas. Ooh, that never is an intense Judas. name. I never heard anyone naming their kid Judas. I don't think that she wanted him to live. Yeah, yeah if you're, yeah, if your name is Judas, yeah. as a Judas. Child? I mean, it's, I actually kind of like the, I like the sound of the it. Sound of it's Obviously, cool, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, it's a, context, context, it's a cool name. Yeah. but it's, it means like yourself. ultimate portrayal. Yeah. Yeah. Portrayal. Right. yeah, yeah. Well, he died after being rushed to the hospital. Now, when police interviewed Juana after the murders, she said that she'd been worn down by a life of poverty and domestic abuse, sure. noting that her husband had recently beaten her so badly oh. that she couldn't eat. She was hearing voices. Oh, it was yes. later uh, discovered that she was bipolar and somewhat like child murderer Andrea Yates, coincidentally, also from Houston. Weird. Juana said that she wanted to kill her kids because she didn't want them to live in this quote unquote bad world anymore. Oh, that's horrible. And she would planned on jumping in after the kids we're dead. And that's why we're here to talk about social safety nets and why they're needed. Programs like SNAP, for example. Let's discuss the debt ceiling, shall we? <laughs> oh, yeah, I love a good C-SPAN <laughs> conversation. What, what was the years? This was the 70s? 86. 86? That yeah. is so horrible. But I, I do find the difference between female family annihilators and male family annihilators, a lot of times comes to an, down to an emotional quotient. Mm. Moms seem to be a lot sadder about killing everybody, but the dads are just super excited to move to New Jersey. Is this your version of women driving? Drive like this, yeah, and then this drive is my like that. club. Yeah, this is my <laughs> club appearance. Comedy, yeah. Uh, here at Chuckle Hut, he's got some of the best murder comparison stories. Oh, yeah. Kid, the moms like to drown their kids. I guess they want to go to the pool. A dad, <laughs> you know, they mostly bury them in a field. I guess every father wants to be a gardener. I love this bit. Well, with women, what it seems like from what, you know, but what few child murderers I have uh, studied, a lot, especially like family annihilator. 
uh, child murderers when it comes to women. Like it's about mercy. It's about I want these kids to not have to suffer on Earth anymore. Therefore, I'm going to drown them. Yeah, it comes almost up. That always, theme comes up a that lot. That theme comes up a lot. And with men, it's usually like I save you from my embarrassments. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, with men, it's usually like I just I want to get out of here. Uh, like, actually, um. Jessica and I just started talking and she's 28 and she's got different knockers than my personal, this wife I right. currently have. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, they're all kind of in the way. Yeah. That. I'm just getting, and if I Ugh. get, if I get the divorce, I'm going to have to oh. change my status on Facebook. Oh yeah. That's I'm going to hear lot. it from everybody. <laughs> yes. And so therefore put them in the ground. Yeah. Reminds me of that dear Zachary documentary. If you want to cry, no, good. Ugh. Watch that one. Ugh. reportedly though, when Juana Lieja was interviewed by a Mexican folklorist the same year she killed her kids, it was said that she looked him in the eye and said, I am La Llorona. Oh! Uh, but of course she was highly, she's very mentally ill. And oh, she, yes. Actually, Texas gave her a very fair sentence. It was surprising. You'd think they would have sent her to the fucking chair. Yeah. She got like deferred adjudication. Um, they made sure that she got some mental health, I hope uh, so. health help. You know, yeah, yeah, they should have. Yeah. yeah Most what of the else? kids left. And then that was it? You got a couple of meetings and then she just got to go home. <laughs> I think there's probably a lot to that story that they, they can handle that. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. And to this day, the La Llorona legend spreads and continues to evolve. While she's still most active in Mexico and the American Southwest, you know, specifically Texas, the legend has made it as far away as Gary, Indiana, mm. where it's been blended with the legend of the phantom hitchhiker. A woman in white has been reported drifting around a yes. suburban community named Cadehi, which was once populated with Mexican-Americans who worked the steel mills in Gary, Indiana. Hmm. Supposedly, the ghost is said to have killed her illegitimate children who had been fathered by an evil factory owner. She drowned them in the Calumet River. When she's picked up, she usually asks for a ride to Calumet Harbor. But just before she and her driver arrive, she disappears, never to be seen again. God damn it, man. I thought I was really going to have some action here later the on tonight. The mysteries thought, yeah. of Gary and the end. Yeah. <laughs> Just you can see the guy's pants down underneath his ankles and Just she like, disappears. Like, ah, you God damn it, man. Damn I have the uh, bumper sticker that says ass grass you know, or uh, <laughs> cash. No one drives for free. Honestly, I just, I guess how I am. Truly only interested in unavailable women. Oh, <laughs> ghost, <laughs> ghost women. And that's La Llorona. Wow. Man, it's very that's crazy. It's really intense. I would like Woo. look up this book because it's really interesting to see how many different stories, how often like, because we were going to tell some tales. Each one is very similar, but I think that's what's interesting. Is yeah. The fact that yeah. all of the stories are very similar. People see it again and again. And if that, if the response from just our audience having seen La Llorona, it was so crazy. Yeah. I'm certain this must be, I mean, it's just, it's very prevalent in yeah. a lot of Latin American society. Oh my goodness. It's, All right, everyone. Because well, Bloody you Mary has also got a whole very uh, intense historical like past too. There's a lot of historical context to her, yeah. but I never saw her. We did it multiple times. Do you remember when we did it on the show? Uh, we did? I actually yeah. don't remember. I, don't remember that I, I want to say this was really early. It must have been. I oh, did, we did it. No, we, didn't we just do it at your house? Probably. We may did, have just done it at the house. I, I think we were hammered, hammered, yeah. and Hammer, just did Bloody hammered. Mary like four or five times. No recollection of that whatsoever. It was at your house where the original studio was. With oh, the, the, 228 and a half Bowroom. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the house that was, when you walked in sober, you thought you were drunk because it was on a slant. Yeah, it was yeah. tilted. Yeah, 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 it was a little I carriage house. I love that little house, though. Oh, no, I still think about that house. It was a wonderful place. It, it was, was a it was magic, like, magical little dirt ball. It yeah. really was. I miss smoking inside. Yeah. Well, you can... I'll, Light up right now, my friend. Oh, cool. I'm like Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. That was As very always. educational and awesome. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff. You know where to find us. You can um, see all the horror shit. Check out our Sirius XM show. It's Monday, yeah. 6 p.m. And also check out uh, our stream live on the Patreon. Uh, also, uh, Spring Hill Jack Coffee. Go mm -hmm. and check that shit out. Oh, uh, we, do we have any? Do what are July your dates? July 16th. Yes. I got something coming up in July 16th. I've been told I have to market it. So come on out. That's gonna be. Uh, well, look at my look at my Instagram. I'll show you where it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you where God, it is. We're so bad at this. Uh, I know. I can out, see my manager or our manager just yelling right now. I'll, and I will pitch the brighter side live is happening 9 p.m. at the Pack Theater tonight. This is coming out Friday, so tonight the brighter side live. So come check it out at, at the Pack in Los Angeles. Awesome. Yes, and I will be in the. The Cobbs Comedy Club, located somewhere. 
Oh, so there you go. <laughs> and next Thursday on May 25th, season three of No Dogs in Space is officially premiering. Yes. Fantastic. And Spun season is also coming out this week. We got a new Spun season. Awesome. And uh, awesome, we, awesome. we can't wait to see you next Thursday. <laughs> yeah, can't. No, that's that's my joke, number one. It's a what do you yeah, call a mean girl with can't. a list? You call her It's cunt. Because you see her next Thursday. Thursday. Still tea. And also, we yeah, only we, we record on Thursdays. They uh, they Let's listen on Fridays. And I see you every day. Yeah, I see everyone all the times in my dreams. Table hmm. against Top Hat. Uh, oh, Let's God, see. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. Don't go to the water. Hail yourself. Hail Satan. Again. Look, congratulations, everybody. My Yorona. Yeah. Nailed it. Who was hey, the band that sang that? My Yorona. Who was the band that sang My Sharona? Uh, the Knack. The Knack. Nice. Yeah. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com.